Welcome to my mini lecture on financial ratio analysis. And financial ratios are another method that we can use to analyze financial statements and derive useful information out of either an intra-company analysis, looking at one company, or by performing an inter-company analysis. And what I've got here on the screen is a Wikipedia entry for financial ratios, which uh, not only tells you why you're performing financial ratio analysis and the purpose, but also lists just about every ratio that I could possibly think of and gives a method for calculating the ratio. We're going to spend a, not a whole lot of time having you memorize ratios. It's important to me that you understand what the ratios are trying to tell us and what kind of information we can derive from a ratio analysis. So in this lecture, we're going to break down ratios into three different types liquidity ratios, solvency and ratios, and profitability ratios. And just like with other, other financial analysis we've learned about in the past, ratio analysis is not an end-all, be-all, doesn't give you a, a tried-and-true answer every time. It is only a place that we can use to start deriving information that will kind of start our investigation and lead us into areas that, uh, that we need to look at it further first uh, area we're going to look at are liquidity ratios. I like to talk about liquidity is if, you know, personally are you liquid is how much money do you have in the bank. I don't care if you're a billionaire, if you don't have any money in your bank and you go into Starbucks and order a cup of coffee, they're not going to give you one just because you're rich. You've got to have currency, you've got to have, be liquid enough to pay for it there. So liquidity, when we're analyzing the liquidity of a company, we want to know, can this company meet its current obligations? Can it pay its debts? We don't, even if a company is very, very well off, if they don't have any cash, we don't want to extend them credit because they're not going to be able to pay us back. Well, these are some types of liquidity ratios. We're not going to get into a lot of detail and tell you all about these because you can study those on your own. But just notice with liquidity ratios, all the different ratios we're looking at here are somehow touching current assets or current liabilities two of them. That's just current ratio, which is current assets over current liabilities. Days in inventory, analyzing our inventory. Another, again, another current asset. So with liquidity, we want to know, do you have liquid cash, liquid assets that are going to allow you to meet your obligations? Next area is solvency. And solvency is a little bit different from liquidity. Remember we talked about our billionaire who goes into Starbucks. Well, they're not liquid because they don't have any money in their pocket. Maybe they're out for a run. But they're solvent. They're not going bankrupt. They've got plenty of assets. They just don't have any liquid assets. No, no assets uh, that are handy. Now, why do we care about solvency? We need to look at solvency in connection with liquidity. We really want our, our, uh, the people we do business with to have both. If someone is liquid, they have plenty of cash, but they're not solvent, they you know they owe money to everybody in town, we might not want to do business with them. Uh, examples of some solvency ratios are what we're looking at here, we've got debt to total assets, cash debt coverage. We're looking at debt on the balance sheet. Do we have the assets to cover our debts? The last uh, portion of ratios that we're going to look at today are profitability ratios. Very simply, is the company making money? A company may be liquid, may have cash around, it may be solvent, it may have more assets than more debt, but if it's not profitable, then what's going to happen? Eventually they're going to eat into their cash and their assets, and those will go away. So it's important to look at all three of these together. They all three are part of drawing a picture for us that can allow us to, to derive information from a company. Profitability ratios, you notice a lot of these have the word profit in them. I'm talking about earnings per share, price earnings ratio, gross profit ratio. You can look in your textbook or in Wikipedia on how to calculate these. I'm going to go back to our example here real quick, and we're going to look at performing a little bit of ratio analysis on our Lilly Company that uh, we've introduced to you previously. So here we got Lilly Company, their balance sheets for 2007 and 2006, and we've computed their current ratio, which is a liquidity ratio, by taking their current assets of $725,000 divided by their current liabilities of $250,000. You notice that we have a very good 2.9 to 1 ratio in 2007, which is better than our ratio in 2006. All things being equal, 
we would like to have a higher current ratio than a lower current ratio. We'd rather have more current assets than current liabilities. The second ratio that we've just demonstrated here is debt to total assets. Basically, we're just dividing our liabilities over our assets. And you can see that our ratio went from 0.42 in 2007 down from 0.75. You think of debt. Do we want to have more debt or do we want to have less debt? Well, I would bet that most of you are saying that we'd rather have less debt. So that's the correct answer. All things being equal, a lower debt to total assets ratio is better than a high debt to total assets ratio. Let's look at one more ratio. This is again the income statement from Lillian Company for 2007 and 2006. We just computed a profit margin ratio. And I can hear you already repeating, this is definitely a profitability ratio. We've taken the net income divided by net sales. We see that we have a 25% profit margin ratio in 2007, which is better, all things being equal, to the 18% profit margin ratio in 2008. So thank you for attending this little mini lecture, and I'll see you in class. Make sure and get your homework done.